Hey guys. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I guess I forgot that I um, need to do my giveaway announcement, which reminds me, Georgiana, I'm so sorry. I haven't bought your book yet. I feel terrible. I forgot until I needed to film this. So I will, I will buy it uh, by Friday. Okay. But that's, uh, my preference would be to just do both, you know, that one and this one at the same time. Uh, so as soon as I get in touch with the winner of this one, I'm going to buy both your books. Let me see. Also only four people entered. So, and it's for crying in H Mart. I'm pretty sure is this one. I should start writing it down because I can, I'm confusing myself a lot, but anyways, Hey, it's my June wrap up. How's it going? Um, let's see. All right, Stephanie from Ms. Richard Reads. Um, I think this might be the first time that you want a book for my giveaway because I don't think that I have your address. So yay, Stephanie. Um, message me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so anyways, yes, June was not a great month for me. Um, I read very, very little. Um, I don't know why, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it, I guess. Uh, that's what all the cool kids say. Um, I did DNF, or I guess technically I DNF'd two things and unhauled one thing. Um, I tried to read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and I do have a vlog that I will link below, um, like when I'm talking about the books, um, me going through them. But yeah, so I have removed The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Ar Arthur Conan Doyle and The Valley of Fear by Arthur Conan Doyle from my bookshelves. Um, I do really like these editions. I only had purchased one, two, three, and then I think I got this one as a gift. So I feel kind of bad, but I just, you know, I'm not interested in reading these. And I also DNF'd Shanghai Girls by Lisa C. Just not for me. So this is going to be a super quick video. I only finished two books in the month of June. Um, I am going to talk about three books though, because one of them I read most of in June that's the right month, right? Now I'm like confused because I wasn't doing things right in my last video, but I read most of it in June and I just finished it in August, July, July. I read most of it in June. I finished it at the beginning of July. And so I'm just going to talk about it in this wrap up. Okay. So, um, the first thing that I, or my least favorite book, I guess, of the month was Thomas and Beulah poems by Rita Dove. And this won the Pulitzer prize for poetry in 1987. And I got this in my Finney by post, um, subscription. And yeah, this was a really good, um, it just, I, I just didn't get it and it didn't resonate with me. So it's like a totally personal thing. Um, poetry is still hit or miss for me. And unfortunately, this is more of a miss. Um, I do think that it was like the, the language is really beautiful and I'm going to keep it on my shelves to revisit it in the future. Um, but I think it was just like a little bit too um, is cerebral, the right word. It's just like, you know, I'm... I'm a, I'm a simple girl <laughs> and poetry is not a simple form. So it was, you know, challenging because of that. Uh, the next thing that I have here, my next favorite is Loop by Brenda Lozano, translated by Annie McDermott. And this is, um, I guess, is this, this one was Carnegie Mellon Press. And there's a picture of the author. Gorgeous. Um, this is a Charco Press book and it I mentioned it's translated by Annie McDermott. Yeah. Um, what was I trying to say? Sorry, I just got a text message. Uh, yeah, so I actually, when I was about to sit and film this, I like don't remember this book at all. Um, I know that I write, rated it highly. I think I gave it four. Let me, let me look at my bullet journal. Yeah, I gave it four stars. So I, I did really, really like it. And then when I was reading the back to try to kind of jog my memory, I tried flipping through and even flipping through did not help me jog my memory. But then reading the back, it did. The reason that I don't really remember this, it is, there is a plot that happens, but it is very much a person just writing their thoughts down. So this book is not, you know, like Stacy and, you know, David went to the mall and blah, blah, blah. It's very much like this, our main character whose name I do not remember um, if we even learn it. 
Um, she just is writing down her thoughts and feelings and it starts off with her. She's, my phone went out of space. Anyways, um, so she, uh, it starts off with her, she lives in Mexico City and then her, I, I believe she lives in Mexico and her, um, her boyfriend has gone to Spain because his mother has died and she's from Spain originally. So I don't remember if the wake is there or if like, he's just going to try to like explore his, his roots with his sister and his father. Um, but they come home and he kind of stays a little bit. So I, I wouldn't really say that the plot or like that the feeling of this book is focused on, is focus focused? Am I losing my mind? Is focused on their relationship and the two of them specifically. I think it is more of like an internal dialogue and that just happens to be something that is going on. Um, but I really, I did really like this while I was reading it. I just don't remember a ton of it because it is very much like, random thoughts and feelings about her stationery and like you know she has so much one of the like best parts of this too and I, I feel like I've mentioned in the past that I hate it when authors are pandering to their audience and talking about how much they love reading and how much they love books and how much like oh you just can't take a book out of my hand I think that Brenda does such a good job in this book because she like name drops a lot so she talks about she, she mentions just tons of authors and I feel like there's a reference to, um, you know, the Savage Detectives in here, like by mentioning one of the characters in the book. So you kind of, if you've read a lot of things that she has read, they're kind of interspersed in the book. And so you're just like, oh yeah, I know that person. Or, oh, that sounds familiar. Let me Google it just to see. Um, so that's really nice because it, it, it's, it's, it's speaking to you as a fellow reader, but it's not like saying like, congratulations, you're a fellow reader, if that makes any sense. It's more just like a little like inside joke kind of that if you missed, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, put you off or anything. It's just a little added bonus. So I really liked that. And then my favorite book of July that I, ah, my favorite book of June that I finished in July, Virgin with a Memory. Ah, this book is so good uh, by Sophia Almaria. I gave this book five stars. Um, mostly I want to talk about it for my July wrap up so I could give a copy away um, for my giveaway because this book was so good. So I picked this up for Invisible Cities um, for Qatar. This author is um, from Qatar. And this is just, again, one of the reasons why I love this project and I love like focusing on countries that I've never heard of and why I'm even, I'm like why I'm sad at, and mad at myself because I don't, you know, try harder and I need to be trying harder because you can find really amazing, wonderful things. So this I don't think is translated, but basically Sophia Almeria was trying to make a rape revenge movie called Beretta. And um, so <laughs> it's so good. It's Sorry, I just heard something outside. Um, I just, I don't even know what to say, but basically this book goes back and forth and you don't really notice it quite at first, but the, the font is different based on if it's her diary entry or if it's like the actual plot, but it it's, goes back and forth between the plot of what Beretta would be and um, her interactions with various people and trying to get the movie made. The movie does not get made and so um, she ended up doing an art like installation piece and this book is like the companion to the art installation piece that I think was in the UK. Um, I mentioned this book in our like discord group which I'll link below and someone mentioned that um, the place where the exhibition was is like near them I think and they have like different art installations and I, it's a publisher too so this I think is published the, the publisher's name has changed I believe. I think it's Corner House. Yeah, Corner House um, is the name of the publisher. And let me just, I guess I'll show you what I mean. So, and like even this, there's like portions that are redacted. You can technically kind of read it, but it is very challenging and my brain <laughs> couldn't do all of it. So I tried to read some of the redactions, but it didn't always work. But so here, for example, is like from her diary and then, you know, when she wrote it and then um, and then you can see that the, the font changes. And so we have the portion of the book and it's it's really quite interesting and then there's like um you know let me see there's it's it's one of those books that you know everyone is into but this one's actually probably much better um but you know I assume maybe like pictures of what the room is going to be like when they're filming portions of the actual script so it's mixed like a mixed media type book um and it's so it's so good and you know it's really, really interesting because there's like, so the producer who like is writing notes about the movie and saying 
co just commenting on it and saying like why they think that this wouldn't work or why this would work and like it's too much like this other movie. There's also a lot of um a, a huge movie list. Where is the movie list? I don't know. Boop -doop. So syllabuses and so then there's just like you know uh two two pages worth of different movies that I think are just rape revenge plots which I love I love a good revenge story and you know if a man disrespects a woman violates her body then you know things need to happen so it's just like a satisfying to experience um but it is really interesting um seeing how all of these different people that are not her like it's her story and seeing all these other people trying to touch hands and and change and shape it based on what they think is more socially acceptable or what they think other people would be more interested in watching is really interesting and it I love that it's told in a story format because then you can feel like what's going on inside of the character as opposed to it being a movie where I'm sure like she would have killed it based on this and I do I did buy her um her memoir, which I will show off in um, when I do my June uh, haul, um, but yeah, I I just I'm even thinking about it. I'm gonna start crying. I started following her on Twitter. I'm obsessed with her. I love this book so much. So yeah, if you want to enter to win a copy, uh, please let me know down below because uh, I want everyone to own this. There's only like 11 ratings on Goodreads, which makes me so sad because it's Chef's Kiss, Creme de la Creme. Fantastic, amazing, wonderful, no pressure, but pick it up. Yeah, okay. Um, so that is it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.